Good morning, my name is Corey Stuck and this is my son Ryan. We wanted to share a devotional with you out of 1 Peter chapter 1 today because we're living in troubling times. Where we are in Virginia, we're at a, in a stay-at-home order. Like much of the country is, there's uncertainty out there. Whether you can get toilet paper at the store or even fresh foods uh, in some places. The, the shelves were empty of pasta sauce when we went to the grocery store just a couple of days ago. Uh, and the uncertainty of whether we're going to get this illness, uh, this coronavirus. Sadly, many people are very sick and uh, and then dying from this. And uh, I just want to encourage everyone to uh, be safe and uh, to, but more than that, to be faithful. In 1 Peter chapter 1 in verse 3, Peter writes to these disciples, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guided, guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, You've been grieved by various trials, so that the testing genuine, genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not know now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here, Peter is writing to Christians who are living in uncertain times by the world's standard. To become a Christian at this time could have cost you your very life. And Peter's trying to encourage them and remind them of the certainty that we have as followers of Jesus, the certainty of the living hope because Jesus raised from the dead. It's not a hope in the future. In fact, when you start following Jesus, the living hope begins right now. This We can have this hope because of what has already happened, that Jesus has already raised from the dead. We can have the promise that it's gonna happen for us too as followers of him. This promise of heaven, the imperishable, undefiled, unfading inheritance that is promised to us. You know, inheritances in the world are uncertain. Even though there may be worth millions of dollars, the owner of the inheritance, the father or mother, could decide, you know what, I'm not giving my kids anything, I'm going to leave it to the dog, and there's nothing those kids could do about it. The inheritance that God provides and promises is sure. It is promised and we can be certain of it. This time in the world has really exposed who or what people have been putting their hope in. If it was money in the stock market, much of that is gone. If it was your job, maybe you've lost that job, or now you're in this routine working from home, or so many people, 6.6 .6 million people filing unemployment like nothing we've ever seen in the world today. School happening from home by video. Uh, maybe you're putting your hope in your schedule or your success or your achievement. When we put our hope in anything besides God and his promises, we will be disappointed. Hope in God will never disappoint because what we have to look forward to is heaven the inheritance that never perishes, spoils, or fades. Our faith in this fact is vital to God, and it's why he allows us to go through the challenges we have, so that our faith will be proven genuine. It's more precious to God than gold that's refined by fire. When we go through the challenges, we can endure because of our faith in God. Uh, so we start reading from verse 13. It says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, 
But as he who called you is holy, you also are holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So what it says in the scripture right at the beginning says, therefore, knowing everything that my dad had just spoken about, preparing your minds for action and being sober minded. Um, so being sober minded, how are we going to do that? How are we? That's kind of a we don't really use that that terminology a lot. Um, well, I would say just the first thing is keep people around you that will keep you focused on God. Uh, obviously, we can't physically have people go around us in this day, uh, this crazy time. But um, just have like have people that will call you. Just let brothers know or let sisters know that hey, I need some accountability uh, to stay focused on the mission. To be fo focused on the truth. Um, and then the second thing that I want to say is just to be deep in the word in your own personal study. I know right now it can easily get distracted with Netflix and whatever you want to do, your own little hobbies at your house. But just setting a time in the morning, this is an op awesome opportunity to be have deep study in the word, have hours of quiet times, have multiple quiet times to be deep in the word of God, to be deep in the truth. Um, and then Peter also repeats the idea in chapter four. He says, therefore, be alert and sober minded or sober of mind so that you may pray. Um, so all of this is so that you're going to pray because prayer is ultimately what will guide us to the holiness that got, that Peter talks about later on in, in that section. Um, so whenever you feel yourself kind of loosening in the focus, like look around at the people around you, get some help uh, from them, uh, but have, talk to them to have them encourage you to pray because the goal is to pray so that you can remain set on his word, um, ultimately, so you have the self-discipline to be obedient and ultimately to be holy as God is holy. So during these turbulent times, just remember that God is allowing us to go through this so that our faith will be proven genuine. Let's fight for holiness in all that we do and glorify God in our lives. Thanks so much. Have a great day.